This is the tutorial video for SOLIDWORKS 2011 on creating a tire model from Chapter 3. So the overall goals for this project are to create mirrored sketch entities, tangent arcs um, along with the line tool. Um, we're going to apply sketch relations to reduce the number of dimensions we use. We're going to use all of the above to create a revolved feature and then eventually circular patterns based on those revolved features. So the source drawing for this model um, you can see here and we're we're gonna start by creating the cross section of the tire and this this cross section is constrained by uh, the dimensions in detail B and also the uh, inner and outer diameters in um, this uh, side view here. The first step with this model is um, after we've created a new part uh, we're going to start by creating a revolved feature with the uh, following steps. We're going to place that on the right plane. We're going to use uh, crossed center lines as a reference and we're going to then sketch the outer profile and mirror it using our line tool. And The, the dimensions we're going to be using to constrain that sketch are listed here for reference and we'll be including them towards the end. All right, in SOLIDWORKS we're going to create a new part. Just select part here um, we're going to right click on the part in the model tree, go to document properties, select units, and IPS for inch pound second. So we're next going to create a revolved section. We click revolve boss slash base. We're going to choose the right plane. And then to start our sketch, we're going to draw center lines that cross at the origin. Um, in both the X and Y directions. Here again we can see we're gonna keep this centered on Y axis. And now the, these two center lines will serve as the, our mirror reference and also as our revolution reference. Next we're going to start creating the outline. Um, so we're gonna start with a single line um, then we're going to, instead of another line here, right click and change to uh, switch to arc. And what this does is creates a tangent arc um, along that line. So we want to make sure not to assign any additional constraints to this. Um, so we'll have one tangent arc, switch to arc again to create a second tangent arc. Um, and then finally we're going to close the sketch, switching to a line bringing it back to the end. So now at this point we can start adding dimensions. So we know that the radii of these are 1.25 inches and 5 inches respectively. For that we'll use smart dimension. Make that 1.25. Make this guy 5. And now you can see that the uh, solution of this sketch is kind of dramatically different. So we can drag this point around to look approximately like what we want. We want to be careful not to snap this to any of these guides here because that will over constrain the sketch. All right. So finally we can then use the smart dimension to give us our top length here. And I'm going to select this point in the center line and this will give us a diameter or a width in this case across the center line. You want to specify that to be 1.75 inches. So at this point we can then create finally the angle dimension using smart dimension. We're going to choose the center, the first point and the second point and constrain that to be 38.6. And Now we have this uniform tire profile here. Um, we can then add the inner and outer diameters so we will choose each of those edges, the center line, and then size these appropriately. We have 18 inches for the inner diameter, um, and it'll be 26.5 for the outer diameter. And now we can see that our sketch is completely constrained. So at this point, um, we're done with our uh, creating dimensions and now we want to make sure that uh, this shape can be mirrored across the center. So what we're going to do is select 
each of these uh, geometry objects. Um, we're going to choose the mirror tool and then select the mirror about axis to be this center line. We can see this yellow preview is what we want, so we hit check. Once the sketch is completely drawn, um, we can then exit the sketch and it'll bring us to the property manager for the revolve feature. So at this point we want to explicitly select this cross axis as our revolution reference and then it will default to a blind 360 degree rotation which is what we want. We're going to hit check and now we have our completed revolved tire feature. So this is currently a solid revolution. And so our next step is to turn this into a shell. So a shell model is basically a thin walled feature that's created from a solid um, and it's done with a few very simple steps. We're just going to use the shell tool and the feature ribbon and then specify a reference face and a thickness. So in SolidWorks we're um, looking for the shell tool in the feature ribbon. We click that. Um, we then select the inner face as our uh, removal face and then our thickness as 0.1 inches. We hit check and now you can see we have a thin shell with the cross section as with the real tire. So that face that we selected is no longer there. All right, so at this point we're ready to create the wrap feature. This is a flat feature or a flat sketch that is wrapped around a curved surface. Um, this lets us cut in a feature like, for example, a tread on this tire. Um, so the procedure is relatively straightforward. We're going to start with a uh, sketch plane that's drawn parallel to one of our basic planes. Um, and then we're going to anchor it to the tire face and then sketch on that plane. So that's going to look like, starting from our um, tire here, we're going to go to Reference Geometry, Plane, and now we're going to offset from the top plane. And there's a couple different ways to do it. The way the book recommends is uh, pretty straightforward. We can just use an offset of about 13 inches, or sorry, 14 inches. Um, and so then we can see we're just above the, uh, uh, the surface of the tire. We can also, if we wanted to, use a second reference here to uh, lock it tangent, but either way is OK. The important thing is we want a sketch plane that's above the surface. We're next with this plane going to, uh, with this plane selected, we're going to switch to sketch, create a sketch, and um, also click normal to to align our view. And at this point, we want to sketch a fully constrained, constrained tread pattern. So we can do something like a chevron pattern, or um, let's say, for example, chevron's going to be nice and easy to draw, so we can do this. Um, and so, of course, it's as it is now, this isn't a very clean pattern, but we can start to add um, constraints to this to make it a little bit easier to lock down. So, for example, we can make these two lines parallel. We can make these lines uh, the same length. We can make, uh, let's see, we can constrain these lines to be the same length as well. So now you can see when we drag this around, um, we have two parallelograms, um, and so at this point, we just want to select, uh, sorry, we just want to make this pattern symmetrical, so we can throw in a center line, um, and then select really any of these two points, includes, uh, click symmetric. And so now, if I go to drag this, we can see that it varies symmetrically. So at this point, we're ready to add some dimensions. I'm going to click Smart Dimension and then assign this to be 0.375. Um, and then we'll also give this a width. Um, we'll make that 0.5. Um, and so last but not least, we want to constrain the angle here. And so the easiest way to do that is just use Smart Dimension again. We can make this something like 70 degrees. Again, the exact tread pattern isn't important. We just want to make something that is completely constrained to the origin of this sketch. So we've created the sketch. This is good. Now, um, our next step, once the sketch is made, is to switch back to features. We're going to click the wrap tool, and we want to click the sketch here 
to create that wrap. So um, we now have Sketch 3 selected. We want to make sure to check Deboss. And we want to specify the depth to be 0 0.05. So what that will do is project this sketch. It'll wrap it around the surface and project it 0 0.05 inches into the surface. And we can see that now. This is what the preview looks like. And then hit Accept. And we can see our feature now projected down onto the surface. The last step, once we have this wrap, um, we want to hide the source plane because we don't need that anymore. And then we're going to create a circular pattern from this wrap. So we specify 20 or 30, about, depending on the, the size of your pattern, um, items. We want to specify equal spacing so that it fills 100 or sorry, a 360 degree arc. And finally, we want to select one of these edges to be our references. So, so now uh, that edge gives us a, a central axis, and we hit check, it chugs along, it will compute, and now we have our completed patterned tread. So we can see we have the cut in each, in each part, and it's repeated and uniform all the way around. And so that is the tire model. It is um, all done.